Hello, I'm EpiX, Toy Cat, and Minecraft has had over a decade of different updates now, and so it makes sense that over that time, there's been features that were put into the game kind of as placeholders with the idea of expanding on them later, but that kind of got forgotten about. And the best example of this would probably be the rabbit hide, which was added in 1.8 and was only used to craft leather if you used four of it, but then in 1.18, they decided to make it actually useful by making it a component for the bundle. And this makes me think about other features that have been added over time, clearly with the intention of expanding and then were kind of forgotten about, but that could and should be used in future updates. And so in today's video, I wanted to go through 19 of these underutilized Minecraft features, and I hope you all enjoy the journey. If you do, then I want to remind you that subscribing is not only a great way to see more of these videos daily on your homepage, but also greater than 99% of house fires happen to people who aren't subscribed. So do of that information what you will, just like you should do of the information of the bat what you will, because the bat is a 1.4 mob. It comes from the pretty scary update, and it's a pretty scary mob, right? Well, I mean, not really. So what does the bat do? It has no drop. It doesn't even give you experience. It can't be bred. And most importantly, it basically does nothing. It will sometimes indicate caves with their noises. But even in that niche case scenario, just a reminder, we have cave noises as an explicit feature already. So the bat is my favorite example. Whenever every Minecraft update comes out and it has a useless mob that exists pretty much solely for aesthetic purposes, it's like rather than adding this next to useless mob, what if we are updated an old one. The bat could do so many fun things. I mean, for instance, to make caves more scary, it could land on the player's face and really block your vision and make it hard to navigate. There we go. That's a bit of challenge. Maybe they could just have some type of drop. I think the bat wing would be a great example. Could allow for new potion brewing opportunities, but I also just see the idea of like a bat swarm being a rare event. There's so many fun ideas they could use the bat for, but no, instead we get a brand new mob every update that we forget about by the time the next update comes out. And I think it's a disappointment just like like for instance, chain armor. We're always talking about new sets of armor, and in fact, 1.16 even added Neverite, which is actually a really interesting solution to the armor problem by making it fire resistant and making it harder to craft this. There's some really great things going on with Neverite, but I also think the great thing that Minecraft's been doing recently is making leather armor useful. Leather boots can uh, you know protect you from powder snow, and making gold armor useful because obviously they protect you from piglins. I think chain armor should be useful as well. Right now, if you look at the sets of equipment, we have leather armor, which is dark we have gold armor, which protects you from piglins. We have diamond armor, which is of course the max level by itself, but then can be used to craft the neverite. So they're kind of linked together. Um, and so the question there is like, okay, so iron and chain armor. Iron of course is very easy to get. So that's the balance, but chain armor is both hard to get. It's pretty rare. You have to trade for it or find it. And it's hard, it's hard to get, but without very much value, it doesn't have much protection. And so there should be something unique about chain armor. No, um, I thought about this a long time. I don't think it should be craftable besides maybe with chains, given that they do exist now. Um, but I think the more fun way to utilize this feature fully, rather than making it a rare thing that just kind of exists, instead chain armor should have some genuine use. It doesn't have to be giant. It can just be something like, okay, in the real world, chain armor is very light and maneuverable. So maybe the same could be true in Minecraft. It could give you a tiny speed bonus. Maybe that's OP. So maybe instead we just make it something as simple as slowness cannot affect you if you have a piece of chain mail on, because obviously you can't be slowed down. You're the chain mail guy. Or maybe it could just be that you get slightly longer times from speed potions, just like how the turtle uh, shell helmet is, uh, you know, useful for breathing underwater. Maybe that could be the value of the chain mail. That's the best I can think of. But I, I really do think there's something that chain should do besides being this rare, weird quirk of the old days of Minecraft when it was crafted with fire. But that's enough nostalgia. Let's talk about a newer feature because the Wither Rose. The Wither Rose actually is a pretty quirky Minecraft feature. Um, obviously, they come when the Wither kills a mob in the overworld. And I think that they're they're very interesting to look at. And there's an interesting idea there that like, oh, the wither rose hurts you when you touch it, but I think it's underutilized. And so I think just like how glow squid die can be used to craft glow item frames, I think that the wither rose should be used to craft a cursed black die. This cursed black die could be crafted into the concretes, the walls, the everything else like that. But when you step on it, it's going to hurt you. That way, when you see black concrete, you don't know if it's painful or not. Could be used for traps, could be used for, you know, some kind of fun custom things. I just feel like having some additional effects that you can craft into things would be really great. And the Wither Rose has this perfect theme to match that. And even if we say that's OP or that's dumb or that's not great for beginner Minecraft players, what if we do something as simple as, okay, the Wither Rose has this like dying effect to it, right? What if, uh, you know, you place the Wither Rose down and it stops crops growing within a specific radius? That way, uh, you know, you could make it so that, you know, crops always stay at a certain phase and you could use it for building purposes um, as well as, I don't know, you could use it for trolling purposes, I guess. But either way, 
it would be a fun feature, just like what polar bears aren't. Polar bears are my go-to example. Every time I make a useless feature videos, I'm mentioning the polar bears at least once, and I have to mention, for real, why did we add these, these these guys? It was clearly a feature that they were like, oh yeah, the polar bears could be useful in this way. They could be uh, some unique mob when you're going here, and we're gonna do things in the future, and then the future never came. I mean, of course, Minecraft went through some weird times in the 1.11 era, but I feel like polar bears could be brought back with some real use. They could help you, you know, just like how dolphins help you locate, um, you know, like uh, the, the nearest treasure, maybe they could help you locate the nearest igloo, point you in the correct direction, because polar bears want to kill humans, Pro tip, they really do. And so maybe they could point you to the nearest, uh, you know, old igloo, to the nearest village, to, you know, they could have some weird use like that that, you know, players who know the game could utilize. And then for new players, they could be the adorable little, oh, there's polar bears, how cute. That would be a good bounce, in my opinion. I also think different variants of the polar bear for other biomes would be fun. But, um, you know, what I think would be more fun is if we made the desert. I, I know the desert well. It's It seems like it should be already pretty useful. I mean, it's the most useful feature in Minecraft, but I do actually have have a couple of bones to pick with a desert well because finding this thing is kind of rare like a lottery you could say it's one in every thousand chunks or so but here's the problem you find this super rare lottery feature and you get rewarded with uh, 12 blocks of sandstone some slabs and some water and a desert just things that aren't very valuable at all what if there was a small chance this was rewarding what if there was a lottery light effect where one in every hundred desert wells had something fun underneath them what if the other 99 had something just dumb like a bone block but one in every hundred or one every thousand had a chest that actually had some valuable stuff, then you'd be playing this lottery every single time just for a little bit of fun. Gambling is a lot of fun. We should put it in more video games, especially the ones that also have children playing them. I'm just saying we need to get people hooked on gambling earlier and Minecraft is our only salvation. You know, they they don't have enough loot boxes besides on those, uh, you know, partnered servers. So we need to put it right into the game itself. Speaking of things we need to put into the game itself, cocoa beans. Cocoa beans currently have two uses. They are brown dye and they they make cookies, which is really fun, right? But I think cocoa beans should do more than that. I think that, you know, at bare minimum, we could use it to make a couple more crafting recipes. I mean, chocolate bread, maybe. Chocolate cake, definitely. What if we had a chocolate cake that gave you a really high hunger value, but next to nothing in saturation? Because that's how chocolate cake works. It's a sugar rush. You get immediately filled in the hunger, but it starts to go away very quickly. Kind of like rotten flesh. Boom, you could teach people about that. And honestly, uh, uh, if you want to make the cocoa beans more useful, I think the biggest thing you have to start with is the seventh underutilized feature, the cookies. Cookies are such a dumb feature. I, I, again, I'm, I'm sure they had a really great plan for cookies at some point, but we've seen nothing on it. You craft cookies, you know, you use your wheat, you use your cocoa beans, and then you get one of the worst foods in the game. It heals two hunger shanks and 0.4 saturation. That's less saturation than raw chicken, beetroot, and poisonous potatoes. It's really, really, really questionable. I think that, again, we could make it a high hunger, low saturation food, or a low hunger, high saturation food, or something of, of at least some note. Maybe it could stack up to 256 because they're smaller. I don't know what you have to do with cookies to make them any amount of valuable, but right now they're just one of the weirdest, dumbest features in Minecraft. And, uh, you know, the, the only unique thing that they can do is they can be used to kill parrots. So, you know what? Cookies are a feature that are next to useless, except when you're explicitly trying to poison parrots and watch them die slowly. And what sort of mess are you trying to send there, Mojang? I just don't understand any of it. So yeah, I think the cocoa beans and the cookies, give it some real use together so you want to farm these things. I have a cocoa bean farm that I have genuinely not touched um, in a year, and before that I hadn't touched it in like five years. I just, I just think we need to do something uh, with the cocoa beans to make it actually useful. Just like the glowberries. Glowberries came out in the last update, and I understand, like, okay, the caves and cliffs got split in two, but why are glowberries so next to useless? They're a new light source that give you a type of food, but the food is next to worthless because of how little it actually heals you. So what if instead we made the food valuable? I mean, they're glowberries, right? What if they made you glow? It would be fun if uh, there was a small chance of getting some illumination that followed you around when you ate the glowberry. There's a 20% chance that you'll glow uh, for a few seconds afterwards. Would be kind of fun. Would be a good way to help your friends spot you. Or we could make it even better, more useful for the solo survival player. What if we made it so a glowberry has a 10% chance, a 20% chance, even a 30% chance of giving you the night vision effect? Uh, it could be for a very short period of time, so it wouldn't replace night vision potions. But given how big and how dark,
dark the new caves are, wouldn't it be great if there was some way to temporarily see through them while you explored them if you didn't want to light them up? I think that's a great little change that would make the glow berry like something you might want to carry around with you in the caves. Even then, it's like something you might want to carry around. It wouldn't be OP, it would just be a fun little thing. I think even if it was 100% of the time, I'm not convinced I'd carry a stack around me everywhere. But you know, again, there's, there's lots of ways we can make this happen. Just like how there's lots of ways we can make the fletching table useless. The fletching table was added in the village and pillage update. And uh, do you want to know the list of features that it has? Let me show you on screen right now. Okay, so I guess that's technically misleading. Villagers can use the block, they'll use it as a trading site. Somehow the villagers get something out of this block that we don't. Um, but it's really tragic because, um, you know, the, the, the this block seems like it could do some really fun things for the fletching side of the game. What if we could craft our own types of arrows? What if we could craft special things into bows and crossbows? Um, we just will never know what that's like because the fletching table has still not been updated. And as of 1.18, it still looks like they're ignoring it, I hope. Uh, that that changes soon, just like how I hope the fox changes soon. Honestly, the fox feels like a punishment, like, hey, so I hear you voted for the uh, the new uh, Tiger Biome update. We'll add campfires to the game, sure. We'll add the, you know, the sweet berries to the game, sure. Both those things are very useful and used all the time. Totally, that's true. Uh, but we'll also add the fox to the game. You know what's really great about the fox? Um, is uh, he will sometimes carry items in his mouth. And you, can, you can't tame him, but you can make him friendly towards you. And it's like, for real, that's the entire feature. There's nothing special they can do about it. They can't guide you somewhere. They can't warn you from danger or protect. No, they just, they just exist. That's their whole thing. I, don't, don't you like it? Should have voted better then. And it's like, well, I mean, we could make the fox actually useful at some point. That would be nice, right? Um, and I, I feel like this exact same thing applies to so many mobs in the game, but it also applies, in my opinion, to uh, blocks in the game because calcite and tough, two separate blocks uh, that exist in Minecraft 1.17, don't do anything right now. They are blocks that you get and then they exist. And it's totally fine for Minecraft blocks to be solely decorational. I mean, think about it. Does concrete actually do anything special? No, it's just a colorful block. But calcite and tough aren't particularly pretty. And uh, for, for some bizarre reason, you can't craft them into slabs, stairs, or walls. That's right. There is no calcite slab. There is no tough slab. There is no tough stair, no tough wall, etc. And this makes sense because the rules for making those things is it has to be a crafted stone material and famously calcite and tough both aren't crafted stone materials oh wait that's that's totally what they are my bad so speaking of things uh, that i think that aren't that good most of the varieties of horse armor honestly so here's the scoop uh there are three horse armors you can find in chest and then there is leather horse armor that you can craft yourself you might want this leather horse armor because you can dye it and you can have a green horse or whatever uh you might want the diamond horse armor because it protects your uh your horse from the most damage but then iron and gold horse armor exists solely because oh yeah you could find them in the wild before you found diamond. Unlike, uh, you know, iron armor and gold armor, which you craft yourself, which have some minor benefits compared to uh, diamond, and which obviously the biggest benefit is that it's easier to get because it doesn't require strong resources. Um, iron and gold horse armor are just as about as common to find as diamond. And uh, because of that, it means that you just have a random chance of finding better horse armor or worse horse armor. There is no trade-offs to be had there. There's no interesting decisions about, oh, should we put on the gold horse armor or the diamond horse armor? It's just Put on the diamond horse armor if you have it, you idiot. What are you doing? That shouldn't be how armor works in Minecraft. I would love to see uh, enchantments for the other types. I would love to see something special, maybe a weight that the diamond horse armor adds, the other ones don't. I would love to see some actual balancing factor because right now horse armor is one of the weirdest parts of the game that just screams at me that it's underutilized and could be done so better. Just like the turtle shell helmet, I really love the idea of this thing. I mean, you get five scutes and you craft together one of these bad boys and it allows you to breathe underwater slightly longer. It only gives you 10 more seconds and it requires you to give up your head slot, which is kind of weird because getting five scutes takes way more effort than just making a waterproofing potion. In fact, you can even find waterproofing potions in uh, buried treasure chests and a, a waterproofing potion will give you not just 10 seconds, but three to eight minutes of breathing. But you know, the turtle helmet is all of the time, but also there's an enchantment 
that gives you water breathing. And so long story short, it just seems like the turtle shell helmet is in this really weird place where it's so much effort to get and gives you such a small reward that I think it could be dead better. I feel like, uh, you know, you could m make this better by increasing the time of water breathing gives you. That might be OP though. So instead, what if we say that it also gives you uh, some benefits of the turtle master potion? There is a potion that obviously uh, gives you both resistance and slowness. What if while wearing the turtle shell helmet, you have some resistance? Maybe you have to also so balance that with slowness, or maybe it could be something really specific and new we've never seen before. Like, oh yeah, the turtle shell helmet gives you a really strong resistance, but only to head attacks. I would love to see uh, an armor revamp in general, but I feel like the turtle shell helmet is the one that I want to use the most, but I just never can bring myself to trade out a neverite helmet for a turtle shell helmet, uh, lose all of that protection, and only get 10 seconds of water breathing. Is that worthwhile? I don't think so. Just like getting the phantom membrane, uh, the phantom, uh, I have some very choice words to say about the phantom, but the phantom membrane is the thing that really gets me because you can use them to make slow falling potions and you can use them to repair the elytra. However, the slow falling potion is really, really good for fighting the ender dragon, but then when else are you realistically using it in survival? Okay, you know, that's that's true for lots of potions and the elytra crafting, uh, the elytra repairing. How often are you repairing an elytra using these? I think 99% of players who have an elytra have either the unbreaking and mending and Enchantments on there, or just the mending enchantment if they're going a little bit thrifty. But I don't think most people are running around using their elytra to the fullest and then repairing it with phantom membranes, unless for some reason you have a dumb number of phantom membranes and you don't have mending. I just don't think there's many players that fall into that category. So I think it'd be great if we could use it for something else. What if we could use it as a way to craft, you know, hybrid potions where you get half speed and half night vision, but they take, uh, you know, they give you half as much effect each and for half much time? You know, there could be lots of weird ways you could use use this to make uh, even just a wild card potion. I, I think making the phantom membrane more useful would make the phantoms themselves um, less of a hated mob, maybe. Speaking of things that would be less hated, lingering potions. I just, I, when is it ever useful to have a potion that remains on the ground for a few seconds? Um, you know, again, I have a very strong bias. I play mostly solo survival because I don't believe in friendship and the power of, uh, you know, playing with other human beings. But if you do, even then, I think lingering potions are just too much effort to be worth throwing them on the ground and then people standing there and getting a slowly weaker and weaker effect. I think the times that you do want to get a whole group of people, you throw a splash potion. Even when it's a negative potion, uh, you're still going to throw splash potions, maybe multiple of them. I just don't think most people think, yeah, I want a potion that stays on the ground for a really long time. I would love to see a better version of the lingering potion, perhaps, that could be uh, used to like taint a block or something like that. Again, could be used in map design, could be used um, in like a fun trap design, could be used in all sorts of uh, design but I just feel like giving the Lingering Potion an actual use, uh, giving it more of a targeted use rather, and uh, you know maybe making it more powerful would be uh, really useful because I can't tell you the last time I non-ironically used one. Uh, just like these Splash and Lingering Water Bottles. Do I need to say anything more about these guys? Do I need to? No, I don't. Okay, great. So uh, the Glistening Melon is another great example of a item that is useful for brewing in one single potion. You make the healing potion with these boys and then that's it. And uh, you know, maybe there's some value to that, but I, I don't think so. I think the glistening melon as a golden melon should be useful for something. I think maybe you could craft nine of them together to make a golden melon. Okay, there's, there's a fun idea, right? Maybe you could use them as like a discount golden carrot where you could eat them and they give you really high saturation, but no hunger. Again, I think, I think there's a market for food like that that could exist. Uh, or maybe it could be the exact opposite. It gives you a uh, high hunger but it poisons you because you shouldn't be in gold, man. I I, I think there's lots of great ideas, the glistening melon, um, that could exist, and I feel like we should come back to this. Just like the tipped arrow of invisibility, this can be considered one of the hardest items to craft in the game, and so what happens is you craft this into this, into this, into this, into, and then once you do all of that, you get eight of them, and they're entirely useless. I mean, you could fire them at something and make that thing invisible if you wanted to. Okay, no, you don't want to do that. You could fire them at yourself, and you could get oh, you get this many seconds of invisibility compared to this many if you drink a potion. Also, you have to hurt yourself, so maybe not so smart for that one. Um, maybe you could fire them at spiders and make them go away that way. I just I just feel like the tipped arrow from invisibility is such a hard item to craft, but it just doesn't reward you enough for that. That's my personal take. And that's why I think it's an underutilized feature. Wow, comes full circle, does it not? And so yeah, the last feature I wanted to talk about today is of course the white bed. I mean, it's useless. 
I mean, you can technically sleep in it, but do you want people to think you're a peasant? No, you don't. That's why you dye your bed red. If you're going for the classic look, you dye it blue. If you're going for the igloo look, or one of these many other colors, you know, screw your, your star sign. I want to know what color you dye your Minecraft bed is a meme that exists in the world. Uh, but today, I just wanted to say thank you for watching this video. I really do think, to summarize, that Minecraft is doing, going on this big binge of updating existing features that were kind of missing it, like the Never update, the Village update, the Ocean update, even Cave update is finally coming to the game. And I feel like if we're going to do this, rather than adding a ton of useless features like the Tufts of the world, rather than adding the Phantom Membranes or the Foxes of the world, it would be cool if we took the old Phantom Membranes, the old Foxes, the old Tufts, and we started to give them a use. There are so many features in Minecraft. In fact, we, there's so many more that we didn't uh, you know, make for this list, like fire charges. I mean, why, why are they so useless? The glowing sack. Why do we have so many of these items that get added for such a specific use and then not brought back upon? Uh, allow players who went and collected these items under the promise of doing something useful in the future, allow them to get a small dividend for their work. And it's the sort of thing that I think people would really appreciate. And that's why I'd appreciate Minecraft using its underutilized features rather than the getting about them and then in 10 years being like wow do bats really exist or not i'm not sure because they do exist and they need a buff and maybe that buff should come in 1.18 or 1.19 or you know maybe it should just be in general a plan to have speaking of plans to have i have plans to end this video i hope you choose to subscribe if you want to see more of these because youtube statistics show that two-thirds of people don't do that even though they're watching the videos wow why are you watching the videos if you don't want to see more of them maybe subscribing is a great way to do that wow look at me i'm naming the statistics as a way to encourage people to subscribe but somehow more people do subscribe when they see that most people aren't subscribed why do you need to see that most people don't do a thing to know that you should do it maybe you should do the thing anyway because that's how subscription buttons work yeah the subscribe button is in fact underutilized just like the like button and just like the outro of this video goodbye